Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, dear friends, my name is Mitya Rosenberg. I am director of the regional office of the all-Russian organization Urban Renovations in the Ulyansk region. And I am glad to welcome you to our discussion session, uh, Creative Industries. First of all, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, Tatiana Silvestrova, head of the Department of International Activities of Rosmolodyosh, Russia. Uh, Priyanka Barji, art Curator of Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, India. Uh, Shumbanja Sharma, Indian Institute of Management, India. Saman, Saman Sinjar uh, Sitikanta, uh, representative of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, India. Ms. Du Chenki, Operation Director uh, of uh, Education Technologies. China, Oleg Valerievich Zorya, Director of the All-Russian Organization Urban Renovations Russia, Angelika Pena, General Coordinator of Projects National Secretariat of IANTH, Brazil, Asenta Tumizvane, Deputy President of the South African uh, Young Council, South Africa, Mansur Muktarovich Ahmedchen, Manager of uh, the uh, Residence of the Creative Industrial Stab Russia. We acknowledge the high importance of the International Year of the Creative Economy for Sustainable Development, announced by the United Nations in 2021. Within the uh, framework of the discussion session Creative Industries, a presentation of the best practice in the field of design, architecture, advertising, fashion, uh, visual, cinematography and musical arts, uh, computer games and other areas of the creative economy from the BRICS countries will take place. Okay, I would like to ask you to make an industry pitch by Tatiana Silvestrova, head of the Department of International Activities of Rosmaladosh. Uh, hello, dear friends. So now we can start our working sessions, uh, not political speeches, no official speeches. Let's make our session very fruitful very productive and I hope that you will have uh, your proposals maybe you will give us your experience in urbanistic sphere in uh, creative industries so I have one idea this uh, project from my team f f not from a team of the Federal Agency for Youth Affairs from my team like from experts group who work with us long time and they don't speak Russian or they don't speak English that's why they ask me to make a presentation and I love this project and I hope that you will like it also. So, uh, first of all, I wanted to say that in this city, in Ulyanovsk city, uh, two months ago, we opened the project office for youth international cooperation, Russia BRICS. Uh, major goal of this uh, project office, uh, we have a few major goals for this uh, uh, project office. The main goal of the project office is to unite young people in different spheres. Uh, the project office will assist in establishing business contacts between different organizations and people of the BRICS countries. For example, uh, maybe some Indian students who study in uh, Ulyanovsk University, he want to find uh, good Chinese contacts, good Chinese links for medicine sphere for example, for exchange experience in medical sphere. And he can come to project office or he can write uh, some uh, letter to email of the project office and ask, please, guys, help me to find a good, uh, fruitful uh, link from Chinese side for in medical sphere. For example, and project office uh, we uh, should uh, uh, project office will give these contacts because project office is like a big bank of different uh, contacts of young organizations, business community, uh, people who work for international cooperation like that. Second uh, part of work of this pro project office is to create new project and program for young people from BRICS countries. Uh, and all young people can come to this pro project office and can create some new project. And you can give uh, and you can get uh, money to organize your project office, to organize your uh, private uh, project for BRICS countries. And uh, uh, also, Federal Agency for Youth Affairs support 
of work of this project office. And for us, it's very important to work with this project office because we want to accumulate all practices uh, of young people who work for international cooperation. And I hope that you also guys uh, who participate in this summit, you will start to work with project office, with people who work in Ulyanovsk, and they will help you to get a new links to be participants in the future on the biggest BRICS events like that. Um, and of course, Federal Agency for Youth Affairs also will, um, will help you to organize links with uh, our people from Project Office because uh, it was our ideas to open a Project Office in uh, Ulyanovsk. For example, in Russia, we have the same Project Office in four uh, Russian regions. Ulyanovsk is about Russia BRICS. In Kazan city, it's uh, Russia Organization of Islamic Cooperation. So we start to work also with 57 countries who participate uh, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Third uh, project office, uh, it's uh, in uh, northern part of Russia, name of the city Salihart. In this project office, we'll work uh, for international youth cooperation with Arctic Council, you know that in Arctic Council, eight countries, Canada, United States of America, Norway, Sweden, and other countries. And the last project office in Omsk city, its, uh, it's project office will work with countries of uh, uh, Asia Central region. It's Tajikistan, Kyrgyz Republic, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan. So we have uh, four project offices. Uh, and please welcome, you can come to this project office, you can write email and you can work with uh, all these project offices in uh, four cities. So what about this idea laboratory for creative solutions? Uh, the main goal of this, uh, of this laboratory to organize links between young people who work in media sphere, in architecture sphere, design sphere. Uh, we want to organize some communication platform for young people from the BRICS countries who want to work, who, who want to organize mutual projects in this sphere. And of course, it will like educational platform. First of all, for, for example, we will organize in this uh, laboratory some Young, uh, some camps, some camps, some events for young people from these spheres. We will organize for them for them educational project, educational program, and uh, major point of this work that young people, young leaders from architecture, design, media, they will organize mutual projects. They will build something together. They will create something together. And best experts from BRICS countries will work in this laboratory. Uh, so format, uh, like I said before, it's different format. Uh, we will organize this program not only in Russia. We want to organize in Brazil, in India. We want to show our young leaders how is different culture, how is different architecture, how is different uh, views, how to build some building, you know, how to organize some process in design sphere. And we must to organize some exchange program about, um, about art, about how, to, how young people can work in design sphere, how we can use new media for our cooperation. And I hope that this project uh, will be one of the best, best projects of our uh, project office. So you can see that also we want to work in ecology. If you remember today on the panel discussion, we, on the plenary discussion, also many speakers said that young people should to work in ecology sphere. And maybe we, we can together organize some good project, fruitful project for our ecology, for our nature. And I think that now young people have uh, some modern view modern uh, mind, you know, not like our fathers or mothers. And we can make something interesting, something different for our project sphere and for our international youth cooperation. And we decided, like Federal Agency for Youth Affairs of the Russian Federation, we decided that first camp for young people from, this, from all these four uh, spheres, we will invite on the next year to Ulyanovsk city on the BRICS Youth Camp. 
it will it, this camp will work minimum two weeks. We want to organize a very good uh, practical exchange program, and we hope that our p young people will get money from our project office to build some new um, architecture, art subject like that. Uh, first, it, w it will in Ulyanovsk. After, we will go with this program to Brazil, China. Already, uh, our Chinese partners um, with Chinese partners we organized um, some special acceleration program name of this program Russian Chinese youth business incubator it's some special program for young businessmen and you know that this project without business is not possible to organize very important to invite business to invite investors who can give money to make a good building, to make a good art subject like that. And first of all, we must to, um, we must to um, teach these young people how to organize business process, how to organize international project. And that's why we want to use a good experience for Russian Chinese use business incubator because this program already worked five years and already we, ha we, had, we have a good results. Uh, all volume of of trade and investment projects between young people who participate in Russian Chinese youth business incubator around 320 million dollars. So it's real money. It's money. Uh, this money made our participants, and we hope that in these spheres also we can make or we can organize business process, and we can organize good exchange program. So I hope that you like this program. So my partners. <laughs> Oleg Zarya, and you can see Ilya. Uh, they will organize this program and we will support it uh, from Federal Agency for Youth Affairs and from Project Office for Youth International Cooperation, Russia BRICS. We will support this project so you can check the contacts, you can write them, and please be part of this big project. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation, Tatiana. Let me introduce uh, you to our next speakers from India, Priyanka Vardvaj, uh, Shumanji Sharma, uh, Sam, uh, Saman Sinhar uh, Sitikanta. Uh, you have the floor. You are on mute. Sorry about that. Greetings, everyone. My colleagues. And, um, so, can I have the presentations, please? Thank you. So, um, me and my colleagues are going to talk about creative industry, role of youth, um, especially in Indian context. Um, next slide, please. So, creative industry largely refers to a range of economic activities which are concerned with the generation or exploitation of knowledge and information. Um, they may also variously also be referred to as the cultural industries or the creative economy. Um, next slide, please. So the major creative industry that generally we have interaction with on day to day basis are literature, music, design, architecture, advertising, crafts. Um, see, a uh, creative content has potential to transform society in a much more impactful way than we probably realize. Yes, we do know that uh, uh, our contemptive culture or art is largely inspired by society, but social practices are also shaped by the content consumed by society. What the uh, creative industry provide us a platform for expression of thoughts and ideas via creative means like poetry, painting, music, or others that the population feels connection oh. with and understands them better. Um, the ideas are diverse. Basically, it gives voice and medium to otherwise less focused issues. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, here I'm going to present an example of a beautiful uh, work of 
creative industry. It was a movie called Swadesh. It represented a story of a young scientist who sees opportunity in a rural village, a village that didn't have electricity. So he thought that uh, he can bring electricity to that village with the help of people and his own expertise. And he succeeds in doing that. Now, this movie cultivates an idea of uh, not just patriotism, it develops empathy and entrepreneurship and capitalizing on human resources. Exactly the kind of uh, values we want to inculcate in our youth. So art, it not only expresses itself, it also promotes the same idea. So next, I'm going to talk about the craft industry um, as part of creative industry. I would like to build, um, I would like to uh, talk about craft industry as in, it is an industry which is uh, recognized, yet still the market for these people, the craftsmen, it's, uh, it's not enough for their livelihood. For example, these are beautiful craft products, but these are their buyers, these are local people, and the market is heavily dynamic because it's not organized. So I'm going to talk about how the youth can uh, help organizing this sector. Next slide, please. So uh, the resources youth has that these local craftsmen lack are first research and research and analysis tools to understand the needs and requirements of market better, make more accurate decisions using data analytics and more information technology tools that we currently have uh, that these local uh, craftsmen do not have access to. We can introduce them to the market. Next, we have network. We have human capital, especially with the help of social media. We have an edge there. Third and major one is e-commerce and uh, the access to digital platforms. The largest scale digitization is another advantage of our current era. Um, so using these tools, we can help these craftsmen connect with a better market and help them make sure that they earn for what they earn better and earn with for their livelihood. So this is one role a youth can, youth can play. Another one is education via um, using their art. So I'm going to have my colleague, um, Sitikan, to uh, provide an example for how one can use art to promote the social causes. Thank you. Uh, hi, getting renewed ministers, my fellows, uh, speakers and delegates. I am Sitikan Samsinga, visual artist. Uh, I belong from India. Uh, my work uh, 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 as an artistic help in the visual uh, visual art marketing in support to the global economy. The first point it is the, uh, the greatest success in the heritage presentation uh, preservations can occur when the heritage elements is in actual use and uh, and, uh, and thus the capable is getting revenue to pay for its preservations. Uh, and second point it is the traditional artistic and uh, uh, arts organization may not have the skills or business acumen to take the advantage to the market opportunities. And the third point it is the potential consumers often lack information say, about the qualities of the uh, performance that they may, may wait uh, to attend or object that may be available for uh, sales. Uh, and fourth point it is the new technologies and more uh, widespread uh, access uh, to technology for cultivating pulse have to have play a major uh, role in alternating economic structures of the uh, culture pulse industries. And fifth point it is the jewelry designs. It is uh, it will be helpful for the global growth economy uh, growth economy markets. Next slide, please. Yeah, basically my work was always influenced from my surroundings and cultures. Uh, I basically developed my ideas in the uh, uh, various part of the world. Uh, I uh, it, it is a very uh, big challenging to the young artists to the how to uh, we put uh, in the marketing how art was uh, um, uh, global market was supporting to the artists and young art generations. It was very big challenging. Uh, uh, in this situation, the condition not be the best, but 
we all have to come together and make the world a better place. Uh, thank you, uh, next, uh, my uh, Priyanka. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you, my colleagues, Shubhangi and Satikanta for sharing their views with us and a good afternoon to all the delegates and esteemed uh, personals. So, uh, as you can see on the screen, it's written cultural industries and creative industries. These are the two terminologies that are interchangeably used. The concept of uh, cultural industries is more related to the cultural heritage and traditional forms of creation, while creative industries um, includes the applied arts practices, innovations, and generating profit and creation of jobs uh, by creating intellectual property. What we are witnessing presently is a transition to a new form of cultural and creative industries. Hence, that's why there is so much of confusion. We are facing a cl complex globalized world as mentioned in my earlier presentation. Hence, the lines have blurred as per the emergence of crisis and the appropriate solutions in the context of our topic. It means that the clear dividing line between the producers and the consumers of content is disappearing. The cultural and creative sectors are now considered the forerunners of new dynamic forms of economic activity as the society moves from being an industrial society to an intellectual one. The creative approach that we have uh, towards solving tasks is becoming an important factor of competitiveness. Uh, next slide, please. Cultural heritage as an industry, um, as a creative industry, though we are in a process of getting to, um, to the mentioned state globally and have various organizations aiming, but what we need is to join them efficiently. How are we going to do that? The first thing to focus on is how to generate more opportunities for already existing creative professionals and how can we utilize their skills to navigate in this field? How can we utilize our cultural heritage uh, itself to sustain our economy nationally and aid global economy? Well, these are the questions that have been, uh, that so many art historians and uh, economists and theorists, they are trying to um, answer. For instance, the economist and our, our <coughs> sorry, our theorist, Pierre Lugui Sako, also enforces that creative economy best reflects the local characteristics and preserves identity in the globalization era. He names uh, Inner London and Milan as examples of places that are mostly actively developing creative economy through cultural heritage. So we have so many uh, examples and instances available in terms of cultural heritage, and we should be learning from these, uh, you know, the global economy. What is creative economy? In the last decade, um, sorry, Along with the economic benefits, creative economy, it creates non-material values and provides a sustainable development centered on the human being. So it is basically the holistic approach. The notion of creative economy is defined as the totality of individuals and businesses that produce the culture, artistic and innovative products and services. This system also includes space where the creators can freely present their works, receive feedback and exchange ideas. For instance, we have so many art residencies available today where art historians, curators, artists, they freely, uh, freely use, their, use these services to, um, to make a commentary on the political issues and share their ideas. The main feature, however, of a uh, creative economy is the people's use of creative imagination for increasing the value of an idea. For instance, John Hawkins came up with the concept of, concept of creative in economy in 2001 to describe economic systems in which value depends upon originality and creativity and not only on traditional resources like land, labor, and capital. In contrast to creative industries that are limited by specific sectors, the term creative economy describes the creativity of the economy as a whole. So strictly speaking, it is new ideas and not money or technologies that are source of success today, and most importantly, of personal satisfaction. Um, can you change the slide, please? 
a creative economy gives new life to production, production services, commerce, and entertainment. It changes the environment in which people wish to live, work, and study, as well as where they think, invent, and create. So these are basics that if, uh, the creative economy demands. Creative economy is a fast growing sector of the world economy. It is dynamic in generating income, creating employment and developing export. As it is less tied to the material resources, we have organizations like Asian Heritage Foundation New Delhi, whose main aim is to not only empower our crafts, craft clusters, for in terms of food, textiles, performance art, embroidery art, various crafts, et cetera, all over India, but also to make sure to generate economic benefit for the craft producers. Uh, can you change the slide, please? Uh, more. Okay, uh, next one. Yeah, next one. Thank you. So in conclusion, uh, culture can be and is a reason for change and creative economy is a fast growing sector of the world economy. It is dynamic in generating income, creating employment and developing export as it is less tied to material resources. We have organized, uh, sorry. I think there is some mix up. Uh, can you go back please? Yeah, okay, uh, the recommendations. Establishing teams of creative, pro creative professionals at large scales aimed at protecting our cultural assets. It is important that we, uh, we have so many challenges already in the country and at the global level, but what we have to do is we have to support the emergence of the dynamic culture and creative sectors. We have to also support the sustainable systems provided by UN, United Nations, and um, other uh, major agencies of the global economy who are trying and help the entire global economy by creating certain um, you know, provisions and by bringing out projects. So it's, it's good to sustain, uh, to support the sustainable systems of governance for culture, investing in human resources holistically, to upscale the cross-cultural transitions between nations, more than already existing. I know that there have been so many provisions already in existence, but what we need today is more than what we are already doing. It's, it's, a, it's an ever-changing globalized world. And we have crisis every day, as I've said in uh, my previous um, presentation as well. So can you uh, go to the next slide, please? So despite these uh, incul inculcating the cultural integrity, this is one another aspect that we have to work uh, when we talk about creative economy, creative industries, or um, you know, the cultural industries. It, is, it can be done and it has to be done at the very basic level. We cannot afford to uh, you know, sh uh, shadow the basic, the grassroots level. So it's important to create a curriculum aiming to provide established understanding of cultural integrity at large. We are at a stage where if we do not have the cultural integrity, we, we, will be, we will never get out of the present scenario. What is happening in US, what is happening in India, we are never going to come out of it. Mandating the aforesaid curriculum at school and university level uh, for all the courses. So it has to be mandatory by working with the youth and the adults simultaneously in sensitizing them about cultures all across, across the globe. Dissemination of culture is happening, but at a slow pace due to various social and political crises. We need to embrace globalization. Can you uh, change the slide, please? Okay, I've, I've done that. So that's in conclusion, I would like to say that we uh, have so many provisions already. Uh, that have been created, that have been implemented, but that's not enough. We have to do more than that. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for speaking. Maybe you have questions? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to proceed to our next presentation to be given by Ms. Du Chenken, Operation Director of uh, Nanjing Hergo Education and Technology. You have floor.
Hi. Okay, thank you. And hi, everyone. Nice to meet you online. And I'm Dou Chenqian from Delegate of China. You can call me Dou Dou. Uh, I'm also the founder of Ouch Theater. And today I will share with you our experience of starting some international online project during the pandemics. And uh, I hope by sharing those experience, I can introduce to you a new form of theater called Apply Theater. I also want to show you how Ouch Theater help people to face the challenge of the pandemic, especially the challenge in terms of mental health and emotional expression by creative arts forms to form a global community, share experiences, and support each other in this global crisis. And next slide. Uh, us. Next, yes. And you can just read it quickly. Um, yes, this is us. And next page. Here are some of our projects during the pandemic, and I'm going to share it briefly. When the pandemic just broke out, I was studying in, still in London, and uh, all the news, false or true in social networks just made me feel so bad. And I believe you can understand it's this kind of feeling now. And in the meantime, I start to realize that my teachers, classmates, and friends who come from different countries, they also care about me. And besides that care, there is also a head of curiosity. I, I told myself I have been practicing. I should do something. So I set a post in the global playback play play theater community. And next page. Mm, at that moment, I hope we can create a chance in forms of playback play theater to allow friends in China in the national lockdown to tell their stories and also to make them feel heard and cared and also to give them a more object, objective perspectives to know their own situation through the performance. In the meantime, I wish friends from different nations could know more about those real life stories so they will know China in pandemic in a more truthful and multiple angles way. We believe that stories and conversations could help us better converse, communications, communicate and understand each other. Our belief wasn't strong as by the results. And uh, this page is something I said on the Facebook. And next page, uh, we have held three episodes of international online playback theater in this form. Online, offline performance by different playback theater troops and Chinese audience watch them online. So there are the posters and the photos of those performances. As we have seen, some of troops are from Brits countries such as India, Russia, but then the coronavirus broke out all over the world and our project had suspended. Next page. Till May, the pan pandemic got under control in China. So our third member decided to pick this project again and we start to perform for audience in other nations online. And also reviewed our all experience by playing. We also keep having support to come. You may notice and the uh, participant if you'd like. Next page. Other than international on online playback theater project, we also had a project called the subspace. Next page, please. Thank you. The subspace is 
So we hear people in the pandemic to express the recording, uh, express and record their emotions and feelings by creative art in this project. And uh, this are the production of our workshop. And uh, this, three, this picture is shows uh, shows participants' wishes. All the materials used in their work are easily found at home. So I think those work are creative and cute. And this work also from uh, next page. Yes. I think most of like works from our participants are very creative. And also most of participants have no experience of study any art. So also we offer some uh, tools for help participants recognize emotions in their in our online workshop. Next page. At the end of the workshop, participants create gifts for the groups. So here are pictures of their gifts. And next page. Um, this is our plan of the, those workshops. And if you have, if you are, if if you feel interested in any of them, and you can just ask me, email me. I love, I I like to share it with you guys. Next page. Um, more great online applied theater workshop will be present in the second applied theater festival held by Ouch Theater. And this year, applied theater festival would be quite special because half workshops will be held offline in China and the other half will be held online. So if you are interested in that, you can just follow our Facebook page and Twitter account of Ouch Theater. And next page. Um, you may have heard a lot of words apply drama or apply theater till now. So I want to make simple submit about it. So you can just read what is apply drama or apply theater in this page quickly. <laughs> and next page. Uh, except those projects in pandemic that you already know, we also did a lot of applied theater projects. It's easy to say that most of those projects are closely related with social issues by those cases. So applied theater actually is uh, com commonly used in discussion and solutions of social issues. Uh, I said solutions because the action art form of theater provides space and comes to not only discuss, also try, act, experience, and feel it in a safe environment. So you get to try different way and you will see how to do it better. Next page. Um, this page is some um, connect information and uh, here I know in this meeting there are many who work in area of art and creativities. So I present my work in hoping that more art professionals would think how they can use the art they love to serve more people to allow people from different nations and cultural backgrounds to better communicate and understand each other's emotions and feelings through art. Thank you. And uh, there is here is our contact information. I expect that we may bond more. Thank you. Thank you for a beautiful presentation. And now I want to give the floor to Alek Valerievich Zara, director of the All Russian Organization Urban Renovations, an ambitious team of professionals who are implementing revolutionary projects uh, for their cities throughout Russia. Thank you very much. Hello, my dear colleagues. 
Um, at first, uh, some brief. My conversation is about architecture, construction, and ecology. My aim is uh, to find partners in these spheres. Together we uh, can do great things, of course, and uh, we can make our countries more beautiful, more comfortable, and uh, ecological. So, uh, about a few words about my uh, organization, uh, which calls Urban Renovation. Urban Renovation is the largest youth uh, community in Russia, those goal is to develop the territories of all regions of our country. The organization creates opportunities for young people to participate in improvement the quality of the urban environment in their home regions. Members of our movement are students and young professionals. They implement projects in such creative industries as, as I said uh, before, as uh, architecture and design, as well in the, field of, in the field of urbanism, ecology, smart cities, local community development, and many others. Recently, we have um, actively developed new directions of our activity is uh, di digitalization of urban economy, cultural environment, rural areas, etc. But one of our highest priority areas in international cooperation. That's why we, we want to find our international partners, guys. As part of the direction of international cooperation, we are implementing in 2021 our new large-scale project, the Program of International Youth Cooperation in the Development of Ter Territories. In uh, 2021, the territory of the program will be countries of Central Asia, such as uh, Republic of Kazakhstan, the Kyrgyz Republic, the Republic of Tajikistan, and the Republic of, uh, and the Republic of Uzbekistan. The program participants will be students, young professionals and volunteers in the field of architecture, design, urbanism and other living in these countries uh, in Russia and our partners. We have planned this uh, program with the aim to contribute uh, to the development of cultural integration and cooperation between our countries. And we will achieve this uh, by involving foreign youth in the development of the territories of their countries and organizing cooperation between Russian and foreign youth communities in this area. We will implement the program together with our foreign partners. In uh, Kazakhstan, this is Congress of Youth. In Kyrgyzstan, this is Youth Public Council. Also, now we are building cooperation with partners in Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. In my words, in my uh, in, in in simple words, um, uh, such. Um uh, such event like this. So uh, our partners in, mm, uh, from different uh, countries are, mm, uh, sit, uh, are sitting and uh, hearing my speech and then after, um, after event uh, they uh, come to me and um, said we want to try. And uh, that's why we have four countries and uh, four partners now. Uh, it's very easy. So. Um, <clears throat> how we implement our project. Uh, this is, uh, you can see um, on the screen, the program includes the following activities. In February 2021, um, Russian delegation uh, would visit um, uh, our international partners in Nur Sultan, Bishkek, Dushanbe and Tashkent. In uh, February, May, um, we uh, will uh, make corporate training, uh, online course for leaders and members of foreign youth uh, communities. Next one is competition for foreign students to study under an exchange program during a semester in Russian universities. Uh, next one is urban festivals in eight sister cities. Uh, do you understand what is sister, uh, sister cities, yes? In uh, eight sister cities with the implementation of tactical urbanist projects. Uh, next one is uh, educational offline and online lectures uh, in um, uh, countries uh, which is our partners. Uh, next one is uh, creation of eco workshop, workshops uh, on the basis of partners universities in uh, the countries. Uh, and the next one is the final forum is our uh, in, in our um, uh, Siberian uh, in our Siberian city, which calls Omsk, with more than uh, 100 participants from Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. So, uh, 
Uh, starting point of, of the program in uh, 2021 will be countries of, as I said before, uh, countries of the Central Asia uh, region. However, in uh, 2022, we propose to expand the um, geography of the program to the BRICS area. Uh, we believe that implementation of this program will uh, become an effective way for the development of youth cooperation between our countries and will also benefit in the development of the urban environment through the implementation of improvement projects. So, dear colleagues, we invite you to cooperate and look uh, forward to your suggestion. Our contacts is on the screen. Uh, is on the screen. Uh, in WhatsApp or Facebook, easy, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you have a questions? Okay, please. You had early relationship with with USSR, and you know quite well about all these countries. But BRICS countries are extremely quite different than CIS. So how do you want to work with BRICS? Um, uh, you from India? Yeah. Um, for example, uh, last year um, uh, Tatiana and I were in uh, India, and. Um, um, we uh, have conversation with our partners from the um, youth policy uh, there, and I said, uh, do you have some architecture um, universities? Of course we have some architecture university. Uh, so can you give us contact uh, of them? We have now contact, and we, um, uh, if, there, if uh, there were no um, pande pandem pandemia, in uh, this year um, we can rotate, uh, we... Um, uh, we can uh, make um, we make exchange. Russian students uh, go to architecture university to India, and Indian uh, students uh, to the Russia. And uh, other is other ways is um, we can uh, make in in, in conversation. Um, so uh, if we if we can. Um, Sorry for my English, I have no practice, you know, uh, for a long time, <laughs> because of pandemic. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I, want, I want to try uh, to say you that in the uh, dialogue, in the conversation, we can try to uh, find uh, different ways to cooperate. Um, f f um, uh, easiest way is to cooperate between universities. There is no problem. So I think that if we can, um, uh, if we can um, find such universities in Brazil, in uh, uh, South Africa, in China, and uh, so on. Uh, we can uh, make some conference in this uh, in these areas, uh, uh, different different uh, ways uh, we can cooperate. So why don't you use like students who are already exist in Russia? Like you don't need to invest your money uh, on exchange programs because they are already here. They are already getting education by their own money or by the money of Russian Federation. Our program includes uh, our program in, our, our program includes foreign students uh, who now uh, studies in uh, Russia. Okay. But um, we um, would like to uh, expand to, exp to expand this on uh, students uh, who doesn't uh, who, who don't uh, uh, educate it now in Russia. You know, and Russian students in uh, India. So let's uh, try to uh, make some uh, great things together, okay? Uh, and also, I have uh, some comment, okay? Uh, I think that it's very important that um, people, foreign people who already live in Russia, we want to invite you to cooperate with us, with Federal Agency for Youth Affairs, with the organization of Oleg Zoria. We are ready and we are all very open for you guys if you will come to us and we can, we can make activities together. That's why uh, we wanted to invite you and not make this summit only by online, like our colleagues did it in uh, uh, Russia presidency in BRICS, because all this was in uh, online and nobody invited uh, for people who already live in Russia, you know, who already stay in Russia, who already work in Russia or study in Russia. And uh, maybe on the, 
in finish of this session, we will exchange our contacts, links, and we will start to keep in touch and we will work together because you really from different cities. In in every Russian city, we have a, some special program with foreign students, and let's do our best and let's work. And uh, one moment, um, uh, most of uh, Indian students, uh, I think, studied in Moscow, yes? And uh, the uh, regions of our program is Siberia, um, the Middle East, Far East, and so on. It's very interesting for Indian students. <laughs> okay, I think we can uh, exchange contacts, and after conference, uh, you can discuss how we can realize program urban renovations in your country. Or, for example, for uh, Indian uh, students in Moscow, how we can um, um, invite uh, in this program. Okay. Uh, maybe another questions? Okay. And uh, now I want to give the floor to assent to Ms. Vane, Deputy President of the South African Young Council. Uh, good day, colleagues, and good afternoon, and good, good morning to everyone. My name is uh, Asante Dumizwane. I'm the Deputy President of the South African Youth Council. Uh, our role and our organization deals mainly, it's an, it's an, it's an apex, it's an apex body uh, for, the, for the youth in, in the country. It's a, a political organization. What mainly we do is to connect our member organization to the right channel. For instance, those who are into arts, which is the one for acting, we have to connect them mainly to the arts and culture departments, just for them to get the, the proper channels to present whatever talents that they are doing. But then again, mainly, if you can, if you can check, uh, South Africa has got uh, different types of dynamics. Mainly you have your, your rural area, urban area and township. Now, what we normally deal with is that uh, in, the town, in the township mainly, that's where you find most people, young people who are unemployed and depressed. That's where mainly we focus in, uh, in skill development, especially for arts and culture that's where you will find if you if you follow our creative industry in the country we are doing quite well if you if you can check we have produced a uh, beautiful movies both uh, internet uh, and they would say they have already made it into the international stage uh, example i can give you an example of the movie that is called Tootsie which won, won us an award and put us into the world map a few years ago. Currently, if you can check on Netflix, we are doing quite well with our local production movies, both including even in music. If you can check currently what, what we are doing, uh, we can make an, an example into, into the current song which, which dominates the iTunes, which is Jerusalem. The guy is from the rural area of Limpopo, one province in, in the country. So currently we are doing well uh, into music, both music, film, and the arts. So that's where, that's where we are currently. But if you can also check the, the schools that, we are, that are teaching arts in the country, they have improved a lot. Because if you can check, uh, mainly now, uh, arts contributes a lot of opportunities both for the economy, which we normally, we, it normally attracts um, the tourists, and it also improves uh, the language learning of other cultures. Perhaps if you can also check what we normally do currently into our creative industry. Most of the countries in the, in, in, in the southern region of Africa, they are coming down to South Africa just to benchmark what we are doing I, 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 into the space. What is it that we are doing right so that they can be able to do it into their own countries. But then again, what we will also request on do 
is for these kind of platforms to forge partnerships, not only on paper, but it must be practical for all of us. I think if we can do that, all of us, I think we can assist a lot of people, especially into our countries and the whole of the regions and going forward. But then again, what I will do, I've just made the synops synops of my presentation. I will just email the presentation uh, right now. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you. Maybe you have equations? Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to proceed to our the next presentation to be given by our friend from the nearest region, uh, Republic of Tatarstan, Mansur Muftarovich Ahmedchen, manager of the residence of the Creative in Industrial Stab. Good afternoon. My name is Mansur Ahmedchen and I am the manager of Stab uh, Creative Industries Residence in Kazan. Uh, for five years, we not have been have not only been changing the territory around us, but also trying to fill the urban env environment with new meanings. Uh, in short, STAP is one of the first creative and cultural spaces in Kazan, a multifunctional space uh, what meets the needs uh, to representative of creative inter industries, uh, in particular uh, creative entrepreneurs and content creators. Uh, all of the time of, uh, at the time of opening, uh, of our creative space in Kazan, a creative place uh, was actively developing uh, in uh, 2050. Um, um, but it did, didn't have a point of attraction, a space in which we could uh, uh, gather through discussion, work or not academic education. Uh, and so uh, we started to create a platform uh, open to urban communities and the new formats of events. Uh, and we hit the spot. Uh, education cycles, open discussions, exhibitions of local artists and case studies uh, of the city creative teams, uh, all of this and much more in, in demand uh, content, uh, and we cannot always uh, accommodate everyone. Uh, from the first days uh, of our operation, residents attract uh, their audience, uh, which form at the core of uh, Stab's loyal uh, community. Uh, mission of uh, creative uh, spaces, of creative clusters, is that to create the conditions for growth and development of uh, representatives of the creative class, urban entrepreneurs, young people who are interested in these areas, who live in the city. Uh, people should be comfortable here to work, relax, learn and create something new. Mm. Uh, our place... Uh, does not exist in vacuum. Our surrounding space is also constantly changing. Uh, residents of uh, uh, creative clusters are expanding and uh, uh, renting per per permits in the neighborhood buildings and city entrepreneurs are opening uh, their tenors, ho host, uh, hostels, photo studios, coffee shops and much more uh, near uh, spaces uh, like Stab. Uh, communities uh, is uh, an important element of uh, urban environment and uh, we or another um, team actually uh, interacts with them, holding uh, joint events and providing all the conditions for dialogue within uh, the walls uh, of the co-working spaces. Um, uh, public spaces, creative clusters are meeting points for urban communities, what fill up space. Uh, in such spaces, uh, communities and can discuss and implement their ide ideas. Um, uh, you must give uh, people the opportunity to use uh, your place, your site for the uh, very real needs and interests. Uh, it can be the Spanish lessons or poetry readings. Uh, uh, you involve local communities in the work and the program and help to implement their I ideas. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry. Can I uh, back one slide? Thank you. Uh, Development of creative uh, economy. Stab supports the uh, Stab and uh, another creative clusters. It may be Kazan, Ulyanovsk, or another city. Uh, 
support the development of, of creative class by uh, offering opportunities for uh, intellectual work what develops the economy. Uh, and uh, the co-working is the best place to establish co cooperation and create uh, joint projects. Uh, finally, uh, public spaces uh, or creative clusters all the, uh, create uh, all the conditions and opportunities for development uh, of the creative class in the city, supporting and developing projects uh, important for the city, uh, becoming an educational and discussion platform, a point of uh, unity in urban communities, uh, providing uh, ample opportunities for uh, self-realization of uh, young people in Hamtown. Thank you. Okay, maybe uh, who had the questions? Okay. Hello, hey Manso, I have a question. Uh, my question is, uh, I have two questions actually. First question is, how do you, uh, what's your business model? How do you make it like a self-sustaining environment, this sort of uh, creative working spaces? And my second question is, how do you get your local government involved in it? How do you incentivize your local government to invest in a space like this? Thank uh, you. F first question is, um, uh, we have uh, two things. Uh, what can we can? Um, um, second look. No. Mm. The, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, to earn for our space and uh, rent and another is first is uh, um, rent for even uh, events uh -huh. any and uh, offices for creative industries uh, it's uh, designers architect studios and another uh, it can be uh, media or something do and the second question we um, uh, we cooperate with uh, Tatarstan government uh, and uh, um, no, 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 no. Uh, we mm, we can we can uh, give them uh, array, or uh, we can make uh, mm, together some some uh, e events or programs, uh, education programs. Okay. Uh, if if I can just add, so uh, do you rent the space that you use from the Tatarstan government, or is it your space you rent from some private entity? Uh, uh, our space is in uh, imitation of uh, some font which uh, uh, have uh, many projects and our space stop is one of the projects uh, for um, uh, to solve uh, problems of this fund foundation uh, so it's a, a government fund or a non-government fund a non-government fund so no, 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 no. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. Uh, how you want to engage an audience? How you will do it? Uh, at the time of the opening uh, of uh, our, our, our space, um, for example, initially, one of conditions of this uh, was the um, holding of two events from each uh, resident in one mouth, uh, for example. Okay, maybe another questions. Uh, okay, maybe you want to share your impressions of this conference. Um, I'd, I'd like to start. My, uh, my name is Yadu. I represent India. I'm from uh, Rudyan, Moscow. So we saw a few really great ideas, and I just want to share a few of some things which I noticed is really good. First is Dodo and her project. I think one thing that we learned from the pandemic is that the way education is going to be in the future is going to change really drastically forever. And we just realized that classes and universities can be done online. So I think that this experiment that she did shows us an example of one such thing. And BRICS as an organization can add to that in schools. So my idea is that we should encourage school children from each of our countries to interact through a portal like Teams or Zoom so that they, people of their same age would be able to empathize or to understand the life of 
other kids in China or South Africa or Brazil. And these kids would be able to grow up from a very young age knowing that there are kids just like them in different countries and different cultures. So one government by itself won't be able to do that. But an organization like BRICS would be able to lobby, to push, to incentivize governments to start an, an, a scheme like that. So I think if our kids in schools from a very young age start learning about each other, rather than just diplomats talking between our countries or just a conference like this where we do make a lot of progress but everyone is not as in involved or is not as inclusive as it can be. So with the way the world has changed in the past one year, I think it opens a lot of opportunities for us as an organization to make sure the next generation of leaders know each other from a very young age and know our cultures very well, rather than just taking what the media or what our politicians tells, tells us. And I think we can make a lot of progress in that direction. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, your wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, um, uh, I have a, uh, I have a question. Uh, who is the object of uh, uh, creative space? Creative space, objects. Mm -hmm. uh, audience. Or? Audience. Uh, at first, it uh, uh, creative class. It's uh, from designer to architect and uh, journalist. Uh, at second, it's um, uh, lo uh, local communities, urban local communities, what uh, make in city some new content, new projects, and uh, our space uh, uh, or another sp uh, creative space is the pl um, is a place where uh, we can uh, do is we we can discuss, we can uh, together do these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I I, uh, I understand. Yeah, uh, at the at the space at space watching uh, at space very very wonderful. Yeah, um, people uh, in at the space in this space would uh well uh, well uh, relax. Da. Uh, ya fukitai tore ne tore. Alenshe ya fukitai. And uh, Chitao is Mario uh, uh, at uh, the cre creative creative space um, for workers. After workers, um, after workers uh, at the space, Bahore, Bahore, Bahore store, Bahore office, mm -hmm. Bahore office. Um, but uh, because of on um, yesterday, yesterday, yeah, yeah, yesterday. If you, if you uh, abroad, if you work in office at the near, relax. And um, uh, when you after work, uh, at the, uh, want you, 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 uh, want to want to relax uh, communication more be uh, if you are my boss you are my boss on um, yesterday may uh, this discussion in office at the uh, near relax no by the um, so um, so uh, not the, at the creative uh, creative space to relax communication on um, I I, um, I I think I think y'all um, at the sp uh, creative space watching uh, uh, very interesting, very interesting. E, uh, yesterday, for workers, uh, for our workers, um, Dory <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think uh, where is. Uh, um, mm. Uh, creative clusters are where specific sp uh, place uh, and uh, where uh, offices uh, which uh, where um, 
where can uh, can't work everyone it's uh, specific and uh, um, where can work uh, maybe photographers or designers where, uh, and way have um, where uh, relax time or education time is is uh, Mm. Uh, look, looks like uh, relax sometimes, and you you you, you see uh, he's working, but you don't understand he's working or he, he's relaxed. And we can uh, mm, work uh, all night or uh, relax all day. Uh, mm. Uh, the main task is to uh, to close his work. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I, I I understand. Uh, he, uh, I think I think um, I think uh, easily easily uh, no no no. I think if if uh, um, if yet if have if you have um store and uh, for office um, at the uh, object um, two and four mm. Pasiba, Pasiba. thank you thank you <coughs> i have uh, one more um, word about uh, creative spaces uh, you know guys uh, yesterday um, we uh, had um, a conversation with the universities russian universities um, and um, you know, Mansur said that uh, uh, objects of uh, um, creative spaces is young entrepreneurs, young uh, uh, artists, and so on. Um, and uh, there uh, study this young man, of course, in university. So uh, it's nice that uh, uh, creative space uh, would be in the university. And yesterday we discuss, uh, we have discussion with rectors uh, or um, headquarters of. Uh, universities uh, about it so it's very interesting theme and uh, it would be nice uh, um, if uh, you can give uh, to us some advices uh, if in your country uh, creative spaces how uh, creative spaces uh, in your countries makes um, in universities okay because uh, we were in uh, India in uh, such places it's it, it was very nice I know that my colleagues uh, when uh, then we were uh, in China uh, uh, our China partners uh, demonstrate uh, demonstrate uh, creative spaces in in universities, and uh, we would like to have uh, this experience. You know. Uh, <clears throat> Like uh, our China friend uh, said, it 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 would it would be wonderful. <laughs> it would be uh, wonderful. Well, um, I would like to add on to that. Uh, for example, uh, when you talk about creating creative spaces in universities, uh, well, I understand uh, that this is a platform where we can, even if we don't have like exchange students program, uh, but we can include like uh, culture from different countries through this. If, uh, for example, if we are, I mean, as a BRICS organization, at least we can uh, mix our culture and bring some creative ideas or like cultural uh, creations from different countries and add on to the, for example, bringing something from Brazil, from China, from India. In uh, yeah, and for, uh, in Russia, for example, and vice versa. So, I mean, this is a great idea if we are adding, uh, tr we are going to build these creative spaces in uni universities. I mean, it can work as a cultural ex exchange and, you know, uh, help uh, people, students, understand the culture better. I mean, uh, how to say, very deeply. So, uh, mm, in, in the mm, creative space, in the university, we uh, integrate uh, foreign culture. Yes, elements of uh, yeah, foreign elements cultures. of yes. foreign culture. Oh, it, it, will, it yeah. will be great, mm -hmm. and it will be more interesting because, uh, you know, I mean, for example, if in Russian uh, university we are uh, going to uh, bring something from uh, some creation, I mean, uh, cultural creation. So it will be very interesting for I mean students uh, to be surrounded with, yeah.
Mansur, thank you for your theme. <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> Um, I would make a question about in, in Kazan. I live in Kazan, and uh, I has been in the Shtab in Smyrna, and I have other place because no, it majority of time it's a club, but and sometimes it's a, a cultural space. It's work, um, but uh, for me, I think uh, I think it's a challenge for bricks because. We uh, have a block of integration, economical block, but integration in the creative, uh, I think it's not uh, so. Um, we don't become so integrated because, well, Brazil and America, and so far in Africa, China and Asia, and Russia and Europe, it is very, very hard to make the exchange. But um, I think it's a uh, invite i think it's an idea i uh, have a lot of uh, foreigners in kazan and i would like to make a project in, in stab and, and I, a lot of indians or chinese would like to um, i'm studying kazgik it's kazan is the state university of kutri and uh, for me <laughs> and in the, in the this university and uh, Unfortunately for me, uh, uh, I would like to, to to make a project and to to be um, be a part of this. Um, recently, I sent a, a email for Smena, and uh, he write for me. We already have a, pro uh, a a project for Russian. It's a Russia. You will have a problem. Uh, you have a project for Russian. For Agnes, have a. Um, have a project scooter in the New York culture. And I think uh, um, in the this conference, I would like to uh, think a project integration, the BRICS, integration for Russian, the Indians, and the South Africans, and, uh, uh, and the Russians uh, uh, well. Uh, but on, uh, on, the other side, on the other side, I want to con congratulate you for, for Stab. I think it's a whoa, incredible space. I like so much. I like so much uh, um, Lexia. Yeah, the pop science highlights a lot of this. Uh, and the other side, uh, it's for more for uh, ministers and uh, um, agents responsible by youth policy and, uh, and the BRICS. Um, for me, Nehvatai uh, too, don't have an exchange of a student by BRIC, don't have a residence for artists. Um, in Brazil, we, we talk uh, we talk about it. We have a, a, a serial about India. It have integrated in the two countries, and uh, we don't have um, like this. And uh, and the Upper Union have uh, Erasmus Plus, and the BRICS we don't have a BRICS Plus. I think I would really really like it to um, visit India. I think. What India uh, think about Kuteri, what South African, what for Russia, and uh, and etc. Um, well, I think it's all. Uh, um, <clears throat> great speech, thank you very much. Um, you know, there is a great, great room to develop uh, in the uh, such spheres as architecture, uh, creative spheres, uh, environment development, and so on, so on. And um, each of our countries have a huge, uh, huge. Um, a, a huge experience, a huge experience in this sphere, you know, and um, maybe, uh, maybe in the end of our uh, conversation, we uh, can make some headquarter of uh, development of our cities and universities and uh, spheres, okay, and. Uh, if uh, you if you would like uh, to do it, uh, please uh, can you give us our contact? We uh, will add you to the uh, to the working group working group, and uh, we will uh, we understand that in the format of uh, discussion of one hour we can't uh, make some plan. Uh,
detailized plan okay and uh, we try but we uh, want to try uh, to make it uh, on the distance in the December or January and so on uh, so that's why if uh, you <coughs> If uh, uh, this team is, uh, uh, these spheres um, are interested, uh, uh, you inter interested in these spheres, uh, we uh, invite you to uh, to work with us in this uh, working group. Okay? I would like. Uh, so maybe some questions from our participants who sit by online. Some questions, some proposals, maybe. No questions, no proposals. Uh, so already, I've, finally, first part of our work we finished now. Now we will have a coffee break uh, in the same building when we had a plenary session. Uh, and I want to say a few um, points. First point, I am agree with speaker who was uh, who said about Erasmus program. It's really bad uh, that we don't have in BRICS, uh, same Erasmus program. Maybe let's think about it and maybe we can include some point in declaration. And the uh, second part of our work after coffee break, you can sit, you can concentrate your uh, attention to uh, declaration. And please speak with moderator, with our experts, what uh, points you, can, you want to include like Erasmus uh, program, uh, maybe uh, we will include some mm, some real project, what about we discussed today here. And uh, for us, very important to organize practical cooperation between young people, uh, with the young people who live in BRICS countries, with the young uh, foreign students who study in, Ru in Russia. Uh, let's do something, because uh, now I work in Federal Agency for Youth Affairs, we have uh, some resources, we have uh, some budget, and we can uh, support all your ideas and we can include some points from this declaration, some real practice uh, project to uh, our project office for international youth cooperation, Russia BRICS. Uh, so let's, let's work, let's continue to work, think about practical uh, way of the coffee break and we will back here and we will continue to speak, okay? Thank you so Thank much. You. So now you have a coffee break. Okay, uh, we meet here in uh, 3 to 4 and now we have 25 minutes to coffee break.